today I got a Sanyo Super Beta machine in, Super Beta Hi-Fi machine, I should say. And this one, the complaint on it was it doesn't work. The fellow brought it to me, he said he hadn't used it for a while, hauled it out of the closet to play some tapes, and it's dead. Well, the dead part wasn't the tough part. It also has no color. So we have two faults on this one to get to. And I don't even know if I'm going to get the color done because the guy says he doesn't care about it. He only uses it for music. Let's check it out. So I got a Sanyo Beta that was brought in. This is a Sanyo Super Beta. It looks like they all have the, every single one of these ones I've seen has had this this uh, cover broken off. This one is totally dead. There's no power. There's no time display, no clock, and nothing happens. It is plugged in. And what I was told was that the last time it was used was a couple of years ago and it worked and a fellow that owns it found a couple more beta tapes he had transferred most of his beta tapes over to digital and then he found some more so he hauled the unit out of the closet where it's been sitting for the last number of years plugged it in and it's completely dead no power whatsoever first things first we'll check and see if there's power coming off the power supply got the good old puke meter here only because it was the first one that I could reach otherwise I would have grabbed maybe I'll grab the thermal the thermal imaging meter because I want to see if anything is getting hot so here's the thermal imaging meter I've charged the battery on it I'll turn it on we'll check for some voltages first So I'll just ground one probe and we'll just probe the power supply. We got negative 21 volts on this particular uh, pin. The next pin over I've got negative 20. 47 volts AC. So 47 volts on that one. That must be a ground that one. That's a ground, it looks like two. 0.9 volts DC. 0 0.9. 0.9. Another ground. 0.9 ground 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 point nine what are we missing here like I got that's measuring resistance what are we missing that's another ground we're missing uh, some prime voltages that we need. Like we need like a six volt supply or a nine volt or twelve volt supply or something. This one here, twenty one, negative twenty one. That's obviously for the, the the VFD, the vacuum fluorescent display. And this one here, negative twenty again. But we get this one here, forty seven. That's right off the rectifier. But we have no low voltage supplies. I guess I need to pull the power supply out and uh, check it. It might be this regulator that's bad. I hope not, because um, those parts will be impossible to find. Just saying. Pop the transformer screws out and then the entire power block should just lift up. It's been a while since I've worked on one of these machines, and I'll tell you that. It's been a number of years since I've seen any of these machines. Never saw that many of them even when they were still around because, well, I think they, they were probably fairly, these ones were fairly reliable, but um, not a lot of people fix beta machines when they, you know, when they were when they died. A lot of people just tossed them because uh, 
the VHS machines were around, right? Or maybe they are, they're just tucked in here. But we'll do that first, that way I can get the power supply out of here somehow. All right, there's the power supply. Yuck. All right, we'll we'll test this thing anyway. We'll see what we can we can find on it. It's using an STK7217 voltage regulator. We all know how reliable their 54 series regulators were. I don't know about this one if it's any better, but it's got this crappy circuit glue on here too. But I definitely expect to see some lower voltages and not seeing any uh, 12 volt or 9 volt supply is troubling. So I'll power the power supply up out of the unit and uh, see what we can find. We should have different voltages on the IC. Because without them the set is never going to turn on. Did I just see something spark? I thought I just saw something spark when I plugged it in out of the corner of my eye. And of course, you guys probably didn't see it because uh, the uh, light was in the way. But I thought I just saw something spark. Do we have a cracked board? Maybe we have a cracked board here. I thought I saw something spark. Let me just plug this thing in again. And maybe it sparked. I thought I saw something spark when I plugged it in. Hmm. Let's, uh, I don't see any heat here anywhere other than the transformer. Transformer's warm, but I don't see any heat anywhere else. But I thought I saw a spark. And I thought it was in here, in this area. Like maybe the transformer has, uh, being a heavy iron transformer, Perhaps it's um, broken a connection. So let's just uh, measure here and see whether there's any juice getting off the transformer. Because there should be more than one volt voltage supply. Like I only saw the negative and the, the 40 volt supply, which would have been for the tuner. I did not see any of the other ones. I'm just looking for a ground reference. I think I can ground to here on this. I'm seeing six volts there. That's interesting. Hmm. Alrighty. I see nothing here. And yet when I go to here, I see 21 volts. Could it be broken right here? I bet you this connection's broken right there. I When I first plugged it in, I, I was recording, but I don't know whether you guys saw it on camera because the light was kind of, I think the light was kind of hanging over there. I just saw out of the corner of my eye a, a flash and it looked like it was coming right from this area here. And now I measure and um, I got nothing. Unplug this. Let's get to uh, put this into ohms mode, and or, well, actually, we'll put it into a buzzer mode because I'm just going to check for continuity. Do we have continuity here? Yes, we do. Do we have continuity here? 
No, we don't. So we have a break. Probably right there. Aha! We have a break in the board. Can we see it if I get a close up? Should put the microscope on here, but the camera should work just as well. We have a crack board right there. Yeah, you can see it. I wonder if it will spark again when I plug it in. We'll keep an eye on that and see if it will spark. Make sure that the capacitors are all discharged so that the inrush will uh, charge them up. I'm sure that's what I saw. Okay, watch right down here. Flex the board up a bit. Oh, yeah. There's our problem. A uh, guy's gonna be happy. And the guy, that, the guy that owns it wasn't being cheap. He just said to me, whatever it takes to fix it. Of course, if he sees the video, then if I try to charge him too much, he'll say I'm ripping him off. But he just said, you can fix this. You can just, I'm authorizing you to, to spend some money because it's a beta machine. And because it's a beta machine, he can sell it and, and get some money for it. But here's what the problem is with this type of design. The transformer is heavy. The transformer is, of course, attached to the chassis, but the only other place it's attached is over here. And there's a lot of, you can get a lot of flex. And even though he said that it was just, it worked when he used it a couple of years ago and he put it in the closet, who knows, maybe, maybe it got bumped. I can't see it breaking on its own, but I think probably there was some shock involved. Maybe the unit got knocked over, maybe it uh, got dropped or got bumped and the guy that owns it is just not admitting to that just said it it worked and it doesn't but uh this one hopefully is that's all that's wrong with it and we will get this one operational uh, it's unplugged so i'm just going to uh, scrape away i'm going to put a jumper wire I'm gonna, actually i'm going to i'm going to replace i'm going to put jumper wires in for all of these connections here i, I don't think i have to worry too much about these ones but certainly these big ones here that are in close. I'm going to put jumper wire in over top of these. Just because I have some I have some jumper wire handy and uh, it's the right thing to do. Of course I don't know if there's anything else wrong with this machine. There might be. Who knows? There may be other faults other than this but for sure right now this is the fault that we need to deal with. So I'm going to take a piece of solid jumper wire and I'm just going to put it right around from the diode block
for these other ones, I think I'll probably put jumper wires over to here. Just because this is a, a weak point on this transformer block. Right where the connections are, that's the weak point. I'm not worried too much about these other ones because they're just for the fluorescent display. They're just for the power for that. But uh, the other ones here, I'll, I'll put some insulated wires in place of these ones for my big roll of old orange and, and slate jumper wire that I stole from the phone company. God, I don't know when they used to use this color wire. Um, all the years I've been there, it was always been white blue and we had some white blue and we had uh, red green for special services and uh, what else did they use? Um, yellow violet for ADSL circuits fed out of the central office and uh, blue brown for the jumpers for the original IPTV yes we we had them on separate colors we had um, we used blue brown for the ports that had TV service and yellow violet for the ports that had just regular high-speed internet service and then um, blue white for services that were voice only out of the exchange and then red green were used by uh, special services and then white and red were used for high voltage circuits because when the remote D slams went in the uh, actually I can just take this one right over to here right next to it I can take this one right to there because there's a short one there so I'll just do that Oops. white red for um, the high voltage circuits to feed like for T1 circuits and so forth and for carrier circuits that was to warn the person on the frame that if they got their fingers in there they're going to get a good jolt because there's on the um, the express power for the remote D slams positive 190 and negative 190 so uh, actually 192 so 384 volts across a pair but I don't know what the orange slate was used for it this was before my time I don't even know where this came from I just happened to uh, one day I was unloading my truck and this roll of wire was sitting in the scrap bin and I thought you know what that's too good just to throw out so obviously I don't know it came out of one of the it might have been one of the business guys trucks that retired and he cleaned out his truck that's quite often what happens when someone works with a phone company for years and they collect all this junk in their truck over the years and then when they retire they're told to clean out their truck and everything in their truck whether it's good equipment or not everything in their truck goes in the garbage bin or in the recycle bin because their last day on the job and they got to they got to clean their truck before they turn it in and they just toss everything that's probably where this came from was one of the business guys had it in his truck and it probably been sitting there for you know the last 25 or 30 years because I've never seen this color of jumper wire used maybe some of you out there that are old telecom guys from way back in the day know what the orange and slate color coding was for but we never used it in the frame that's for sure all right I think I've got all the uh, the jumpers that are of concern it's 19 gauge though or no it's 22 gauge it's 22 gauge but um, anyway I figured I saved it from the scrap bin because well I can use it Okay, time to put this back in the chassis and see whether it turns on. Fingers crossed, that's all that's wrong with this thing. Because we don't know. We'll find out pretty quick. And I just sold those Magnafox uh, VCRs that were shipped down to me from a viewer that was getting rid of them. You remember the ones, the Funai made ones, the ones that had the odd looking chassis. I just got rid of the second one. I sold, I sold one of them last week. And uh, I just sold the other one like, uh, well, 10 minutes ago. Between the last shot and this one, the uh, fellow that was talking to me about it showed up and took it off my hands. So that's one more VCR that's 
been saved from the scrap heap and put back into service for someone who needs it to transfer tapes. I'll throw these screws back in. I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident that the problem has been solved. Otherwise I would be plugging it in before putting in the screws, but at this point in the game I think it's probably going to be okay. It's funny, you know, my elementary school was right next to the central office that I work out of now, and on my way home, all of us, we used to go in and raid the scrap bins on our way home for free wire. Me and my friends, we'd all ride our bikes up there, like, after school, and go into the parking lot, which was full of trucks at the time. Now there's only, like, th three trucks that are there, my truck and two bucket trucks. Um, but it used to be full. There used to be about ten trucks in there all the time. And we'd go in there before they'd lock the gate and be going Where's through the, the bin and picking up bits and pieces of wire that was being thrown this. away. All right, the moment of truth. Is this thing going to turn on? Or is this thing going to go pop? I have a clock display blinking. That's good. I got power and a beta hi-fi light lighting up in red on the front. How cool is that? Okay, um, I think we'll try a tape. We'll try this one first and just see whether it will load a tape. That's good. Not loading the tape, but Sanyo, unlike Sony, kept the tape unlaced until you actually hit play. seems to work. Let's uh, pop the let's pop the board out here open. So you guys can see this thing how this one works. I always like these machines, you know. How is this for a nice mechanism? Wow, I like this. Holy crap. I really like this one. Like I've seen a lot of the Sanyos before, but I didn't really pay a lot of attention to them. We didn't see a lot of Sanyo because being a Sony dealer, we saw mostly Sony where I worked. I didn't see a lot of Sanyo ones, but look at this drum on this thing. This is wow. This is just wild. It's got a, a carbon brush. You see that? That's a discharge and a static charge. It's a little carbon brush. How cool is that? Like everybody else uses a little spring with a little, uh, most of the companies use a, a little copper spring with a little carbon electrode that would sit there. And of course, what happens with that after a while? It starts to squeak or chirping. I like it. I'm liking this machine. Let's uh, hit play. And it, it's playing. Looking for the tracking control on here. I know there's one somewhere. There's the tracking. Ah, oh, that's better. It's not bad. I say a lot of dropouts, but I gotta like the transport on this machine. I really do. Let's check out some of the other modes. Hit stop. You know, it reminds me of a three-quarter inch machine. The way it unloads like that. Because, the, oh, of course, the three-quarter inch machines use the same, well, they, they go this way. Because the head drum spins this direction clockwise, and the tape runs from the right side to the left side. So they are basically a mirror image of the Betamax format. In this case, it's just called Beta Super Beta. It doesn't even say Betamax on it. It's just Beta. Beta Hi-Fi. But Super Beta... We go to full fast forward. It goes. So the belts are good. Rewind. Oh, this machine's working. Stop. Play. I like it. I'm going to uh, lubricate that gear. 
this is metal on here too. This is a metal gear that uh, operates the threading ring with a with a plastic over top of it here. Just put a little bit of grease down here. We'll operate the mechanism. I want you to go flying all over the place. I don't want to put too much in there because I don't want it to, I don't want it migrating everywhere, if you know what I mean. I don't I want it staying down here on the gears. I don't want the the uh, centrifugal force throwing it everywhere like all over the tape and believe me that that can happen it's got reverse search it's not reverse searching very well I'm just watching the the, the, uh, the Betamax training the Betamax training tape and uh, right at this point, he's talking about the heads. Maybe I'll show you guys the screen. He's talking about the the difference between the, the super beta and the regular beta. 33 microns versus 23 microns. You see, he's showing the conventional head on the left. It's 33 micron gap. And then they went to a 27 micron gap for super beta. And that was because it needed to record higher frequencies. That was an old HVC 2800 that did not work very well in low light, as you could see. And that was the best that they had back in the day, but we we're all sitting in a dark room looking at an overhead projector. Wasn't that fun? Taking courses with an overhead projector gonna try another tape on here oh what's he drawing oh he's drawing the tracks on the tape to scale of course right these courses were pretty dry we'd spend a week taking these courses learning how to fix this crap and believe me I took enough I took enough courses at Sony we, they call them special high intensity training. They would give you more shit than you could handle. Eject. And that's working. And the idlers are working and everything else is working on here. all the way back to the beginning. You can see the green leader. You know what? This has got another problem, this machine. Okay, so um, we got another problem, Houston. I'll show you what the problem is. Besides the fact that there's a whole bunch of creases on this tape right at the beginning. I don't know what machine did that, but obviously a machine I played this on decided it was going to nibble the beginning of the tape a bit. Um, we got no color. What the hell? And I thought it was just the other tape that it was so dark because, uh, or had no color because it was so dark. But this machine's actually not playing back color, so now we have to figure out why there's no color. My tape a machine that I ran this through at some point has decided to uh, nibble my tape. I wonder if it was that SLHF 1000 that I sent back to Toronto. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I played the, this tape on that one, but I didn't notice it uh, damaging the tape. The yeah, tape plays, it's just got some wrinkles to it okay um, I had to stare at this thing for a minute all the circuitry is gonna be on here I think it'll be the color circuitry will be on here I don't have a manual for this thing so I'm just kind of gonna just touch the board with a wet finger and see if the color kicks in try to localize where the fault might be because I'm sure it's gonna be on this board here oh, that's hi-fi that's 
Left channel, okay, it tells me left channel, right channel. This might be all hi-fi board, this one. The video might be on one of the other boards, but this this looks to be hi-fi. So here's something funny. I just got off the phone with the guy that owns this thing, and I said, hey, you know, I, I got the machine to turn on. It was a, a crack in the board right by the power transformer, but it's got another problem. It's got no color. So I have to investigate that. And his reply to me was, I don't care about color. He says, he used this machine as an audio recorder. Says, if you look on the front, there's a switch that says audio only, right? He says, he used this machine as an audio recorder. So he was telling me he's got about 85 tapes that he's found that he recorded 40 odd years ago using this as an audio recorder because he could get four and a half hours on an L750 tape. So literally, he's told me, I don't care. He says, if you can find the color and fix that, great. But if you can't fix the color, don't spend a lot of time on it because I don't need the color. I only need it as long as it plays back the tapes and it plays back the hi-fi soundtrack. He says, that's all I care about because that's all he used it for was as a high quality audio recorder. So there you go. There's someone who used the machine. But this one has a switch right on it on the front. Beta Hi-Fi off, beta Hi-Fi audio only, audio and video. The Sonys didn't have an audio only mode. You were always recording video. You just didn't input a signal. But I'm going to spend a little more time on it just to see if I can figure out why it's got no picture or why it's got no color. It would be nice to have it properly working. But if I can't find it, then he's happy with it the way it is. So let me just do some more tests here. I, I don't have a schematic for this thing, so I don't know where anything is. I'm just going to grab my scope and just start probing around here and see if I can see chroma anywhere. I'm just inspecting the circuit board. This is in system control, but you can see that there's evidence of that circuit glue that goes bad. So we're going to... I'm going to strip off any circuit glue I find first before I uh, dig much deeper into here. And after having the conversation with the owner of it earlier, I guess I have until he gets here to pick it up to see if I can find the problem with color. Because uh, he didn't seem to be too concerned about the lack of color. In fact, he said he didn't even care to play video because he doesn't use it for that. But we'll try to get it working. I'd like to. I'd like to have it working. It's kind of a challenge now. I know I'm not going to make a hell of a lot doing this because the fellow knows it's working. <laughs> he knows I've got it working. It just has, doesn't have color and well <laughs> that was not a, a high concern for him but I'm going to scrape off this circuit glue and see if there's any uh, traces that are damaged under here. I mean, this stuff is bad. It, it goes conductive and uh, basically turns into a resistor. So all it would take is a bit of a leakage path on a critical circuit that would kill the color. I see chroma when I when I put the scope on it. I do see chroma. But uh, I'm not seeing it in the composite video. So I'm just going to clean this board up a bit. That connection looks almost... Like that's a bad connection there. Just redo that one while I'm here. I should see if it passes chroma through the um, E to E. Well, I wonder if this is it. That part doesn't look like it's ever been soldered. Look at that. Huh. i just been kind of looking at the board, looking for any of the circuit glue, and I spotted that, that capacitor that is not even soldered. I wonder if that will have any effect. I'm just going to power it down here, and um, we'll reconnect that connection and see whether that, uh, whether that solves it. I wonder how long it's been like this. I mean... I mean, this could have been like this forever. I mean, the guy, he said he didn't use it for recording video. He just used it for audio. So I don't know whether the color ever worked on it. But definitely that is not soldered. 
And I spotted another part on the top that doesn't look to be in place either. There was another capacitor. I was just kind of wiggling things around here. And uh, where was it? One came loose, or was that the one that I just soldered back down? Maybe that was the one I just soldered back down. That's the one. And the other side of it also looks like it's loose. So that was placed in there, and it was never soldered down. That is uh, typical Sanyo. Sanyo quality. At least that's what we used to always say about Sanyo. I, I think the, the, the build on these was actually probably pretty good. Now there's one up here that also looks... There's a few of them here that look like they are no good. Look at these. Can you guys see it? Oh, off the board here, but... This is the video board that I'm on here. Oh, here's another one. Look at this. See this? See that one there moving? Huh. And is that connecting or is that broken? Huh. Oh, weird. Is that touching? I mean, some of these wires sticking through the board here are way too long. They, they've not been cut off. But this is typical of what you would expect Sanyo stuff to be like. And we used to see their, some of their shoddy work. They were a cheap brand, right? After reconnecting that capacitor, I wonder whether there's made any difference. I'll just try it. I got it on my CRT monitor just so that the um, plasma doesn't interfere with it. That looks like color to me. Goddamn. Goddamn. One part that wasn't soldered at the factory since this thing was made, that part was just sitting there. I bet you this thing never had any color and the guy didn't even realize it wasn't working. Incredible. Yeah, we got color. Excellent. Well, I'm I'm pretty stoked. I didn't even have to well I was putting the scope on it and I was seeing chroma but I wasn't I wasn't getting my burst or anything. Damn, one one bad connection. See lots of dropouts on this tape because it's so old. But uh, that's um it's looking good. It's looking good. It's looking as good as it can look. Um, it looks better on the monitor than it does. I'm looking at the, the camera video, and uh, I guess the camera is a little overexposed because it's dark against the back, back, background there, but the uh, video looks fine. I see a lot of dropouts. That's just the tape itself. So, um, yeah, I, I've solved another one. <laughs> so I'm happy. So what you guys didn't see was I was checking on the video board here and I was looking at video and I could see the video signal here but there was no burst on it and I started just going through the circuitry here and it actually it, I, I found it I don't know if I even caught it on camera I found it by surprise when well, I just happened to move this capacitor here <laughs> I just moved it right and all of a sudden it's like oh it, it came out of the board it's, what the hell and uh, looked on the bottom, as you guys saw, it, it wasn't soldered down. It was just inserted, but it wasn't soldered. And that was the problem. And what I was seeing on the scope, I'll show you guys the scope, what I was seeing as I was looking. As I was going through, I could see video, but there was no burst. The burst is right in here. And the color burst was missing. That's the burst there. The color burst was missing when I was looking at the video. Anyway, and that's where it was. That's chroma there, I believe. That's coming off the off the comb filter or the delay line. Sorry.
Anyway, we got the car back. I'll put it on the plasma and see how it looks on that one. It looks good to me. Other than the uh, the noisy picture, just well, I get the plasma interfering there, but. Got its share of dropouts, that's for sure. Good thing I digitized this tape. I did I digitized it to DVD probably, I don't know, ten years or more ago. Because it certainly has gone down over the last ten years, the quality. But this is this one was all edited and put up on my channel. But it's looking good, that's for sure. It's looking a lot better than it was when it was black and white. Let's play this opening from Super Channel. Nobody remembers this anymore. We used to have it. Uh, one of our pay TV services in Canada was First Choice, and then the other one was Super Channel. And this was the original Super Channel that we got here. First Choice was available, I think, back east, and Super Channel was available in the west, if I remember. Anyway, this is a long time ago that this was recorded. This is a movie. I can't show the movie, but I can certainly show the opening for it. good old classic movie. This is probably one of the first movies where they merged animation with live action. I think you probably know which one I'm talking about. The heads on this machine might be wearing a bit too. Getting a little bit of, little bit of trailing there. See the streaking there around the letters? That's an indication that the heads are probably starting to wear out. I don't know how many hours this machine's got on it, but, it, but it's got lots. Check this out. Like the three quarter inch, it does like almost a half load when it's um, rewinding the tape. And then like the three quarter inch, it rolls forward just to get that metal leader past the uh, sensors. There's one sensor over here. This is the little pickup that detects when the tape is at the end, when it's playing or fast forwarding, and then, and then there's another sensor over here which detects the tape when it's on rewind. You'll see the tape gets pulled out. Actually, it doesn't. You know, that this sensor over here, believe it or not, only comes into play if you're in search, reverse search. So we'll just play this forward a bit. So if you're in reverse search, that's the only time this sensor will actually ever even see the tape. See that? Because when you're in full rewind, the tape isn't even pulled out here. It's just using this one sensor on that side. So the tape actually has to pull all the way back to hit that other sensor and then go forward a bit. That's kind of a, a, a bizarre way of doing it. But uh, that's the way that the Sanyo does the job. The, the drum is like a mirror. Like on the Sony's, right? We're, we're depolishing the drums. This one here, the whole drum is like a mirror. Wonder how that is for stiction. Probably not a problem because it doesn't, it, it unlaces the tape to rewind it. Anyway, this one here is, uh, is fixed. Put some of my Oops, that's an RCA tape, I think. It's an RCA jacket. Anyway, RCA made beta tapes, believe it or not. Clear. Beta. RCA. Even though they didn't sell a beta machine, they made beta tapes. Anyway, this one's fixed. The guy that owns it is going to be thrilled that it plays in color. Not that he is even going to know that because he uses it for audio, or he used it for audio. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Bye.